So back again with this uh, Seaward Europa Plus Pat Tester where it's losing the memory. A friend of mine who programs the PIC processors uh, and supplies them for us has uh, said that when the uh, <coughs> uh, Pat Tester is switched off, the battery backup uh, runs the real time clock. Uh, so if this battery isn't working, every time you turn the the pat tester off, say you've turned it off for an hour, then that real time clock will lose one hour. So, uh, yeah, that seems to be exactly what's been going on. So, the new battery from Farnell was uh, 3.2 volts, and uh, polarity is not marked on this board. I could go back and look at the video again, but I suspect it should be pretty obvious. Just holding this up to the sun, the connection here has four very thin cross uh, layers on this PCB and it, they go off to the ground plane so I'm sure that the positive is going to be uh, this one here with uh, just the little single track which is on the other side that goes off to, uh, well, I don't know where it goes off to frankly but uh, so yeah it looks like positive is uh, that end and so let's see if we can just pop that through. Okay, so. Done. I think we've got a little stop splash just on there. Make sure that doesn't go anywhere nicely, actually. So, okay, it's caught under the battery. This is not what we wanted. Oh, I don't believe that. What are the chances of that happening? where the solder splashed and uh, came back. So let's just pop a little bit of solder on there. Just that and there. again. So 2.97 now it's been circuits. 2.98 so as uh, near to three as you're going to get I suspect. So let's drag this main unit back. Right so how do we do this? So it was literally just clipped in place on these pillars. Let's see if we can get that on there first. Okay, I'll do that on the table as well. Make sure it's put it back in first, it might be easy. Just going to pop that back in and get that clamped shut. That plugs in place. It's just this uh, 
and that one to do, make sure we're not missing any of the pins. easiest thing to connect. That does look right out. Let's pop that back in there. This bit we should never have unscrewed in the first place so we're going to see if we can just get that back into place before we try and line this up. I guess this isn't going to be entirely simple.
come together okay. Just get all these screws back in. Sign. I guess we've cocked something up. That just flashes and uh, doesn't come on. So I guess we've messed something up. This is some procedure after you've changed the battery, which is possible, and I suspect it's more likely as the uh, wiring is not back correctly, or clubs come adrift as it uh, is pulled around. I suppose if you're repairing and calibrating these all day long, you uh, get to know them inside and out, and you'll know exactly what's happened here. Let's have a look. What did we cook up? No, nothing as far as I can see. It's weird, isn't it? ribbon cable in there very well. I'm not sure that it is. Let's have a look at that. It really isn't in there very tightly. That's perhaps why it had tape on it. in and that is on there. That can't go any other way but that's in it looks pretty much okay to me. So I guess it uh, perhaps knows that something's gone on and has been disconnected and now there's probably a procedure to set it back up again. So uh, yeah, I think we'll have to ring that calibration centre. No idea what's gone on there. So I guess we're ending this video at this point and we'll be back later. Uh, so we eventually found out uh, that one of the ribbon cables it looked like the uh, little plastic piece that secures the ribbon cable just pushes in. But what I didn't realise was it had been t it tilts up and pulls out to release the ribbon cable, so the ribbon cable was completely loose. Uh, so I'm hoping this will plug in and be okay now. Get famous last words. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So now it's asking for the date and time to be set. 
Alexa, what's the date? It's Wednesday, August 22nd. So, 22nd of the 8th and uh, 2018. to the date here, 20, oh you can, yeah, I was scrolling all the way down, the time is 15.25, you don't have to scroll, you can actually enter it, uh, and OK, I wonder if this is remembered, or well, what it's lost, now it's uh, been reset like this, internal relay Fault cannot proceed. Fault code 20. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Just because I took it apart and changed the bloody battery. Really? Really? <laughs> you piece of junk. Clicking quite like that. It's not asking for the date and time now when I unplug it, so uh, clearly that's worked. But there is uh, another problem uh, with this relay warning. Now, whether that's because of another dodgy ribbon cable, I don't know. So, we're going to have to uh, take it apart and have another look. So, we can tell the clock solved. So whatever this relay issue is, which it's never had before, so it must be something else that's not right. Aha, is that pulled off? Let's have a look. I wonder if that just pulled off when we were putting this back together. Tell you what, let's Turn it over carefully, and not let that board fall down, and we'll plug it in, resting on the silicon mat. Uh, not convinced that's made any difference. Internal relay fault. Oh, for God's sake. So, there's all this pulling around and loosened up some terminals. Do we have a bit of a dry joint? What's going on? Have we pulled any wires off that we couldn't see? Yes, that's for sure. It's definitely in place and that's tight. That is not particularly tight, but uh, I mean, it really is loose. That's the cable there.
else could we have done? A dry joint somewhere. Uh, certainly could be some dry joints up there, they certainly look a bit tarnished. Mm. Yeah, hang on a second, that looks a bit dodgy. Super dodgy, and there's some... Uh, is it's been coated with but there's something very iffy about that connection there. I don't know what it is. I have to look a bit closer at that but we do have some uh, dodgy looking joints up here. Let's see if we can uh, clean these up. Port. I'm sure it's intact and not a problem. And that looks like we might well be stuffed, which is annoying as it was working perfectly apart from the clock. Sit on some of these contacts on these relays. And if we've got a problem, there's a big relay here which has got a lot of sit on it. I'd have to remove it from the circuit. No, it's just a lot of trouble. How badly sitted is that? Well, relatively bad. Is that the cause of the problem?
and it's actually fired up kind of perfectly okay now. So um, can't imagine anything we did has sorted that out, but I guess it might have done. Just a little bit of a dry joint up here perhaps. Guess we're gonna to need to assemble this again and see whether that is now okay or not. energized a couple of times during the startup sequence so uh, and there definitely is some soot on the contacts I really don't know whether that's made any difference so, from a little bit of resoldering we didn't really do anything there so It's normal startup clicking, and then it will warn me that it's not been calibrated for a while. Yep, and uh, job done. The time is correct, date is correct, so I think we're good to go. Excellent. Yeah, so uh, there we go. Just a simple CMOS battery change, and uh, we need to get this calibrated now and uh, just see if it runs through its normal tests mm. yeah I think everything was being reset back to normal so we are going to have to set this up again to run the correct tests resistance and, uh, yeah that's only done one test I'd like it to do the run test afterwards so yeah we're gonna have to uh, just set up the tests again as it was uh, before but uh, that solved the clock uh, issue anyway so <laughs> that was useful